And we pray for peace and for blessings on all these noble messengers, including the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we greet you on this, the first day of the month of Jumadi al because the moon was not seen night before last. So yesterday, sorry, today was the last day of the month of Rabbi Uthani, the lunar month. And tonight, the new month begins. So we greet you with the Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, a greeting of peace on my behalf and on behalf of my distinguished brother, Ken O'Keefe. And we begin by recognizing the owners of this hall and the manager of the hall, Javid, who was so kind, very kind, in consideration of the fact that we're dealing with Gaza, we're dealing with Israel, we're dealing with the Holy Land tonight, that they did not charge us any rent for the hall tonight, and we pray that Allah might bless them for this gesture. We did ask you to pay a small registration fee, and that was to block those who would want to sabotage our program by registering and not coming. <laughs> now, then, our topic, listen carefully, is an Islamic eschatological explanation of Israel's master plan. There is a macro part of the subject which I will deal with from the Quran. But there is a micro part that my brother Ken would deal with because he is more familiar with what's happening on the ground than I do. And when I, I will take 40 minutes for my presentation, and I hope it will be <laughs> adequate for me, and Ken will take 40 minutes for his presentation, and he should have more than that. And then after that, we'll have a question and answer session for a brief period of maybe half an hour, but it can be extended. So now then, Israel's master plan. And if we do not turn to absolute truth for an explanation, we might end up being confused and in a state of dismay. And absolute truth is in the Quran, Allah says so, that in this book there is al-haqq al yaqeen absolute truth. And so let's turn to the Qur'an at the beginning of our time. And when we do so, I want to begin with something with which most of you are familiar, but others are not. And this is a narration in the Qur'an of an event which occurred when a very arrogant ruler who was stamping his feet with arrogance on a people who worshipped the one God, who was oppressing them, and who was about to seek to deliver what Netanyahu would describe as the final blow. And then Allah asked his servant to take a staff and strike the water. And because of a miraculous quality inside of that staff, known as the Minsa, 
the water parted. And the servants of Allah, the believers, were able to cross the Red Sea in safety. And when that arrogant ruler with his bloodthirsty army attempted to cross the sea, the waters came down. Prior to this, he was declaring, I am the Lord Most High, and a Rabbukum Al-A'la. I'm hearing the same thing today in Gaza. Ana Rabbukum Al-A'la. I am the Lord Most High. Even the United States must listen to me. And then when he was drowning, Pharaoh realized he was not God. And then he said, underneath the water, no one knew about it. No one knows what happened underneath the water. Not even CNN and Al Jazeera. He said, I now believe in the God of the Israelite people. And then Allah Most High responded, and these are his words. Ba'da'u'zu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. When you're quoting from the Quran for the first time, you must always say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, seeking protection from Satan with Allah. Allah, now Pharaoh, now you make this declaration, Bukad Asaita Kabul, and before this you were in arrogant and obstinate rejection, Wakuntamin al Mufsidin, and you were spreading monstrous uh, uh, corruption and destruction on earth. Now, Pharaoh, for young. Today, Pharaoh, I have decided. Today, I have determined that I am going to protect, preserve your physical body. Why? That your physical body, when it is rediscovered, when it resurfaces in history, would function as a sign for a people to come after you. Most people are too busy to bother about my signs. This is Surah to Yunus of the Quran. And so I ask myself that your body might function as a sign for a people to come after. What is that sign? What is that sign? The body of Pharaoh is discovered and positively identified. It was discovered in 1897, about the same time that the Zionist movement was established in Basel, in Switzerland. What could be the sign? Allah sent the Quran to people who think. But there are those who say no. Knowledge is a package. And that package is already sealed. And all that we need to do is to transfer that package from one generation to another. And all that you need is to memorize this kitab and that kitab and that kitab.
But Allah says, I sent the Quran to people who think. And he says in the Quran, in the dawa in the law, the worst people with Allah's sight, summul bukbul ladina la'akilun, are the deaf and the dumb who do not think. So we are in good company when we reject that bogus scholarship that says that knowledge is a box that is sealed. You don't have to think. And when we think and we offer a view, only Allah can confirm that we are interpreting correctly. So there is no need for any boxing gloves. So what could it be? لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً That when your body is discovered, it would function as a sign for a people to come after you. And my answer, and Allah knows best, is that when the body of Pharaoh is discovered, history will repeat itself. That a people who will live the way Pharaoh lived, with arrogance. A people who will stamp their bloody feet upon a defenseless people who worship the one God. And slaughter them, treat them like cockroaches. That people who will follow the way of Pharaoh will die the way Pharaoh died. The last, the last moment when they're moving for the kill and now the state of Israel will be rid of all its enemies and Israel will be triumphant and our version of truth will end with history. At that last moment, the same thing will happen, which happened with Pharaoh, and they will be destroyed. And if this interpretation of the Quran is correct, then we still have plenty of tears to, fight, to shed. We still have much pain to suffer in the months and years ahead of us, before that time comes, when history will repeat itself, and the Holy Land will be rid of this bogus state of Israel, and true to time. That's my first uh, reference to the Quran on the subject of the master plan. I want